Turn to Matthew 26. Everybody has a, a, uh, an outline there, I hope, I trust. <coughs> How are we doing that live stream, Bob? Just, just humming along, right? <coughs> We've been having trouble with the live stream. They, uh, they don't like us <coughs> for some reason. I mean, we always try to, you know, be nice and positive, right? Okay. Sometimes things aren't positive, are they? We need to we need to have a good evaluation. Well, for the last two, three weeks... We've thought about the death of Christ, right? <clears throat> the violent, unjust, bloody death of Christ. <clears throat> and as they took his body, his mangled body off of that cruel, rugged cross, they laid it in the tomb. I've been to that tomb, as, as many of you know. And it changed my life. When you realize all of history was changed in that little, that little sepulcher. <clears throat> because if Jesus had just died, then it would be as the Emmaus disciples were speaking, right? <clears throat> We would be discouraged because Jesus promised that he would rise again. Amen? He promised he would rise again. And if he didn't, then he would be a liar. <clears throat> and so Jesus did rise from the dead. In Acts 1.5, it talks about by many infallible proofs. <clears throat> and if you study history at all, you know that there are several historians around the time of Christ or shortly uh, at the time of Christ and shortly thereafter, a man named Tacitus, Tac Tacitus or Tacitus and Josephus, Flavius Joseph Josephus. I have both of their works. Now, these were not believers. And even the enemies of Christ said, yes, he, he rose again if they were honest with themselves. Men like Josh McDowell and others set out to disprove the resurrection of Christ and by their honesty became fervent believers. Not only believers, but evangelists. <laughs> you set out to disprove the resurrection of Christ and if you're honest, you will become a believer every time. <laughs> Well, then they buried that precious body in that tomb, and he came out, and then he ministered to his disciples, didn't he? He literally walked through walls in that resurrection body, didn't he? Mm -mm. Amazing. How do you walk through a wall? Mm -mm. Right? Well, our Lord, that's a small thing for our mighty God, amen? Mm -mm. Small thing for our Lord Jesus. He created it all. And so in the mind of God... He can say, here's the Lord Jesus in his resurrected body. I want you to kind of use your mind for a moment, right? I always like to give you something to think about, right? Our Lord is in heaven. He say, <clears throat> okay, here's the disciples. They're there. They're all discouraged and they're afraid. <clears throat> Let's see if we can encourage them. Amen? Let's see if we can help them out. <clears throat> Here they are huddled. And the Lord Jesus walks through the wall. So the Lord is up in heaven saying, okay, uh, this is how we're going to arrange these molecules uh, so that we can get your molecular body, your heavenly molecular body, through that earthly molecular material. <laughs> That's a mighty God, amen? <laughs> that can get uh, that body through a wall and all of a sudden, whoa! <laughs> Jesus is in the room. When Jesus is in the room, everything changes, right? 
Now, poor old Thomas, he missed that first meeting, didn't he? <clears throat> but he found, he found out later, right? The Lord Jesus said, Reach hither thy hand into the side. And You see, an honest doubter is really a wonderful person. We just need to talk with them and reason with them. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as wool. Amen? <clears throat> Though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as, whiter than snow. <clears throat> well, our Lord Jesus wanted us to remember him. <clears throat> I was in a house years ago. An elderly gentleman, kind of like yesterday with you, Shelley, we were talking to this man up in Milwaukee, old Milwaukee, uh, northwest side, up Silver Spring, if you know where that is, Silver Spring. And <clears throat> I was talking to this guy, and he says, I said, do you know for sure if you died today, you'd go to heaven? <laughs> and you know what he said? He said, well, I'll have you know, he called me Reverend. <clears throat> I'll have you know, Reverend. He said, I think a lot about the hereafter. <clears throat> I said, really? Well, that's good. You, you think about the hereafter. Well, how's it going to be for you in the hereafter? He says, well, he says, my problem is, is uh, I remember here in the living room what I need. He says, I go over to the kitchen or the bedroom to get it, and I get there, and I say to myself, what am I here after? <coughs> Amen? <laughs> I have a lot of hereafter moments. How about you? <laughs> you know, what am I hereafter, right? So, I'm here to tell you that the Lord Jesus tells us there's certain things we need to forget. Now, Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, right? <clears throat> and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I pressed toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And so, we need to forget the sins that are under the blood, right? We need to forget the victories we've had because sometimes we'll get lifted up with pride, right? And when you're up on that mountaintop, there's an infinite number of ways to fall, amen? When you're right at that peak, well, haven't I accomplished much for the Lord Jesus Christ? <clears throat> Not in your own strength. Without me, you can do nothing, he says. You can't breathe without him. You can't have a heartbeat without him. Glenda's going to have... Glenda... Poker. <laughs> Glenda's going to have a te test this week, right? She's going to have a test this week on her heart, right? Okay. <laughs> Phyllis will get through to her. <laughs> okay. So pray for her on that. 28th, the 28th, and then the 5th, I think. I think that's what she said. All right. The fact is, without him, we can do nothing. He sustains us. He sustains our physical life. And he sustains our spiritual life. He lifts us up. Amen? And so as we come to this, I'm here to remind you that the Lord Jesus does not want us to forget him, right? So at this last supper here, <clears throat> Matthew 26, 26, and as they were eating, the Bible says, Jesus took bread. Now let's read it together, everybody. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Okay? And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, <clears throat> right? For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine. Uh, let's read that together. One verse 29 is very important. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Jesus was not a drunkard. Jesus was not a drinker as far as that's concerned. Notice it says here, twice he makes it clear 
the type of wine that he drank. Mm, no. Fruit of the vine. First. Then he says, new. Right, Bert. So twice he gives us the description of the elements that we are to use. All right? And so God wants us to remember. <clears throat> now, when I was in Israel, we went up to the what they call the Golan Heights, and they had, I think they called it the Six-Day War, right, in 1967. <clears throat> so we're up there, this, this area, <clears throat> and there's these burned-out tanks, right, and artillery. I mean, all this, 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 this war debris, right? And here are these burned out tanks and, and, and uh, artillery and everything. And I asked our guide, I said, why don't they clean this up, right? Why don't they get this junk out of here? He said, Pastor Cliff, very, he was very respectful. He said, but there is a purpose why we keep these things here. We want to always be reminded of how we defeat, God defeated the enemy. And those tanks and artillery and all of that were the Syrians. He said, and we are thankful for the, God is great in giving us our victory. And so we don't want to remove that because we want to be reminded of the victory that he did. I wonder how many times we forget what we should remember and remember what we should forget. <clears throat> and so that's what this is all about, what we're doing today. It's a time to remember. <clears throat> Those who have gone on from us. You see, I don't, every day I miss my dad. I got a picture of him here, okay? I mean, he was so precious to me. The one, one thing I want, I didn't care about all the other stuff. He, he had a whole shop full of tools. My brother and my brother-in-law got those. I got some tools. I was going to bring a ball-peen hammer I got from him. But the most precious thing I got from him was his Bible. Amen? It's King James Bible, and I, I read that. Each night, I read out, read out of my Bible in the morning, I read out of his Bible at night, just to remember him. And it's amazing as I go through his Bible, the, the little markings and the notes that he put in the Bible. <clears throat> and that's how I visit with him. Will I ever forget him? This, this, this simple guy that had a complex mind that, that went into nuclear physics, and uh, just an amazing man. Built houses, he was a carpenter. And I thought to myself, that's kind of like what Joseph and Jesus did, isn't it? They, they were carpenters. My dad was a lot like Jesus. And I'm so thankful for him. But I don't ever want to forget him. I think of Brother Brian. And of course, uh, Juanita. I got Brian's little book, Words of Comfort and Cheer. And, and what he marked up here is just incredible, the things that he marked up. Just beautiful. He says, and he would make little changes in the, the text. This ain't the Bible, you know. This is just a commentary, right? Elijah under the juniper tree. Remember, Christian, that even in your downcast moods and your darkest days, you are not severed from the company of the great and good, nor from the Lord Jesus himself. <clears throat> Elijah under the juniper tree. David Bringing the, breaking the night silence of the wilderness with his moans and cries. The great apostle of the Gentiles going wearily upon the Appian Way. The man of sorrows himself. Fear not, the darkness will ere long begin to melt. The day is already born. Plot on, poor pilgrim, still, and let not faith die within thee. God, this is beautiful, God has not forgotten you. Amen? No tongue can ever tell or human heart conceive what joys I have in store for all who now believe. Hold on, my child, in faith. There dawns a perfect day when that which is in part shall be 
done away. Amen? So I don't forget Brian because I got his devotional books and the notes that he made. But most of all, we don't want to forget Jesus. Amen? And I'm afraid that we next, I'm afraid that we do in our lives, and I was thinking about, even in my own life, we forget him in our minds. We forget him in our thoughts, don't we? <clears throat> we forget him in our actions. And I think that, <clears throat> you know, I'm guilty of this, so I'm going to tell you what I'm guilty of, okay? Many times. I go and I have this wonderful time with the Lord. <clears throat> have some sweet fellowship with him and his word. <clears throat> Whether it's through the devotionals or or then we get to the precious word of God. And then I leave that place, that war room, right? How many of you have a war room? A place where you go and you pray, right? And you take time with God. Okay? Just remember this. That when you're finished, when you're through, okay? It's not really through. It's what you're doing. It's the start of the day with Jesus. And so, don't leave Jesus over there when you're done. Say, Lord, thank you. I had this, this glowing, rich, radiant fellowship with you so that I might take your presence with me through the day. Whatever I'm doing. Amen? So, now, okay, what did I do this last week? I did a four-wheel brake job on the van. <clears throat> that was fun. I asked the Lord. I had to... I mean, I said, Lord Jesus, I'm going into the garage with you. You're going with me or I'm not doing this. <laughs> okay? So, I, you know. Okay, I need to get over to Brother Frank's weight room. <laughs> get a little workout. Okay? We got her done. Stops real good now. I only smashed into three cars. So, <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Was that you? No. <laughs> All right. Notice it says here, as they were eating. So, we need to remember Christ in everything we're doing, right? When we're driving. Now, sometimes, I don't want Jesus around when I'm driving, but... <laughs> okay, Jesus. Put your hands over my hands, your feet over my feet, right? Okay. When we're teaching, Mrs. Lawton, amen? When we're working, Noah, Don, take him with you. In whatever you're doing, you're going to have problems, and you're going to need his help. Now, I happen to have a problem on that van. I couldn't get that. I mean, I know that those rear brakes were not done since the car was new. You could tell. They're like welded on. And I knew if the Lord will do I'm going to strip this thing out and it's going to be horrible. I'm going to have to call Bert. <clears throat> He's going to have to come over. we have to drill it out and bust it out and re... Oh, man, I just had these terrible thoughts. So I said, Lord Jesus... I bought that, what do you call that stuff that loosens up the bolts? Okay, rust off. Not WD-40, that's wimpy. Uh, I, I got the good stuff. I can't remember what it's called anyway. Blaster. It's called blaster, something like that. Blaster? What do you? Best thing to do is a torch. Tor tor I was thinking about it. A little heat with WD and you can pull them off of your hand. That, you know what? That's what I was thinking of doing. I'm thinking, okay, if this doesn't go, I'm going to put a little heat on it. Yeah. WD. Right. With WD. Okay. All right. He says WD. Okay. I got that. I got that too. I put, I squirted everything on there. I squirted uh, mustard, ketchup, whatever I could get to, to get that thing off of there and beat on it with my dad's ball peen hammer. <clears throat> Finally, I said, Lord, okay, it isn't coming. I'm going to try this blaster stuff, and then I'm going to have to put the torch on it and the heat knot. I'm afraid of that because I don't want to light up the, 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 uh, the brake fluid, right? <clears throat> that, that could be really fun because <clears throat> my neighbor burned down his garage, and so I have that memory vividly in my mind. <clears throat> Carol would not like my garage being burned. 
okay? Because ours is connected to the house, and it could really be bad. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> so the Lord Jesus, I said, okay, I'm going to try this one more time, Lord Jesus. And only you can loosen that bolt before I strip it out. I got that thing on there. Actually, I put a, a, a pipe over the, the ratchet, right? <clears throat> right, Bert? Huh? You have to? Put that pipe on there. And sure enough, it came off. <clears throat> Man, I was having a praise the Lord fit right there in the garage. <clears throat> Molly was at the door scratching. <clears throat> What's going on, Daddy? <clears throat> you know? I'm having a hallelujah fit. Because... I'm a nut, but at least I'm screwed onto the right bolt. Amen? <clears throat> All right. As they were eating, so he wants us to remember him in our life through the day. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't leave Jesus in the prayer closet. Take him with you. What do we do, Brother Frank, every time, every Saturday? What do we do? We ask Jesus for Protect us, Lord. May we have your presence and your power and your protection and your provision. Now, Shelly, before we got to your house, it was pretty dry. <clears throat> yeah, Noah, you, you, you left. I, I, I don't know what happened. You should have stuck around, man. Cause, now, you, you met a couple of guys, Julian, right? And then we had Jonathan, trusted Christ, a young man. Uh, that was a blessing. And then Shelly. I said, Lord, we need somebody. We need a blessing today. And you know what? Shelly was praying, Lord, I need somebody to come by. I need a blessing. Am I right? Yeah. Amen. Isn't that what you prayed? Okay? <laughs> we need somebody. Cassandra, yeah. wasn't that what you prayed? Yeah. I'm telling you, these special people are coming across our path. It's a beautiful thing. It's exciting. It's exciting. Remember him. And so we take this time to look back. We take this time to look back. We look at the... the, the we never want to forget the body of the Lord Jesus and the blood of the Lord Jesus. This is our power. And so communion, if you want to call it that, the Lord's table, the Lord's supper, is a time to remember. We can forget, right? I thank the Lord for old Spurgeon. He says this, this do in remembrance of me. By the way, you're in Matthew 26, right? And then in Luke 22, is that up there? Yeah, Luke 22. I want you to notice that he made this clear. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed and break and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Now, now listen, beloved. Jesus did not take out a knife and chop off a piece of his arm and give it to him, did he? Okay? And he says this several times, numerous times. Let's go over to Luke 22, if you can. Luke 22. And uh, <clears throat> that's why I'm thankful we have four Gospels, amen? They, they fill in some of the details for us. Luke chapter 22. Notice it says here <clears throat> in verse 19, And he took bread and gave thanks and brake it and gave it unto them, gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, everyone. This do in remembrance of me. And so it's a memorial, beloved, like those stones in, in, in Joshua and like a, 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 a baptism, right? We have the, the, the uh, wonderful uh, <clears throat> ordinance of baptism. This do in remembrance of me. That's what old Spurgeon says. It says, it seems then that Christians may forget Christ. There could be no need for this loving exhortation if there were not a fearful supposition that our memories might prove treacherous. It is, alas, too well confirmed in our experience, not as a possibility, but as a lamentable fact. It appears almost impossible that those who have been redeemed by the blood of the dying Lamb and loved with an everlasting love by the eternal Son of God should forget that gracious Savior. Right? 
But if startling to the ear, it is, alas, too apparent for the eye to allow to deny the crime. The crime. Do you not find yourselves forgetful of Jesus? Some creature steals away your heart and you are unmindful of him whom, whom your affection ought to be set? Some earthly business engrosses your attention when you should fix your eyes steadily upon the cross. It is the incessant turmoil of the world, the constant attraction of earthly things which takes away the soul from Christ. How true. I find it in my own life. While memory... Too well, <clears throat> right? Memory too well preserves a poisonous weed. It suffers the rose of Sharon to wither. <laughs> Let us charge ourselves to bind a heavenly forget-me-not about our hearts for Jesus our beloved. And whatever else we let slip, let us hold fast to him. God's people said, Amen. Amen. And so we can forget, beloved. And so throughout the, this is why it's important to have a daily time with Christ, right? And not only have a daily time with Christ, but let me tell you what will keep you close to the Lord Jesus is going out and telling somebody else about him. Amen? And so in remembrance of me, that's what it's all about. Next, quickly. So we remember, the, remembering reminds us of redemption. Number two, remembering reminds us of his resurrection. And I'm thankful for the resurrection guarantees that we have in Christ. You see, no resurrection, there's no Christianity, really. None. Christ promised resurrection, and he proved resurrection. Right? Romans chapter 1 and verse 4, <clears throat> very important. And declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection of the dead. And so Christ... A resurrection guarantees the deity of our Savior. It guarantees our salvation. And it guarantees our similar resurrection. He will, and, and, and as we go back, you notice it, it's said in, in Matthew 26. He, he said there, he said, I'm going to drink it new with you. Well, that tells me I've got a living Savior, amen? He lives, he lives. But so we do it in remembrance of him, Right? Because he is a living Savior. So, the fruit of the vine, and I will drink it new with you. And number three, quickly. So, he's going to drink it with us in the future. We're going we're gonna to sit down. We're going to have, we're gonna have some cookouts with Jesus. Amen? In heaven. And then we'll remember, remembering reminds us of his soon what? Return. Amen? Amen. He wants us to do this so that we will be reminded of his soon return. <clears throat> See, the Lord's Supper, let me give you a thought here that you might not know. <clears throat> the Lord's Supper really is rooted in the Passover. Okay? The Lord Jesus is the Passover lamb. <clears throat> right? And all of those lambs and bulls, and goat, all of those that were were sacrificed in the Old Testament, looked forward to Jesus, the Lamb of God. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming over the hill, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen? And so the Lord's Supper in the New Testament is deeply rooted in the occurrence of the Passover in the Old Testament. Matter of fact, our Jewish friends just had the Passover, right? <clears throat> Last week. And so we joined them with the idea that we pray that they will become Messianic Jews. That they will receive Christ. You, you want somebody on fire for the Lord, you, you meet a Messianic Jew like Hyman Appleman. Or someone like that. An evangelist. And, and think about what's coming though. Think about what's coming. The 144,000. We're going to have 144,000 Messianic Jewish evangelists circling the globe like a flame of fire. And so in the midst, it's, it's, the, the, the tribulation <clears throat> is a fascinating time because it's going to be God will unleash his wrath upon uh, a rebellious world. But simultaneously, millions will be coming to Christ. God knows the number. Okay, thousands, millions, whatever. 
144,000 Jewish evangelists. If they just win one each, that's a pretty good crowd, amen? <laughs> I guarantee you, they're going to be out there preaching Christ. And Israel will have its time to turn to the Savior. And so, as we come, we understand that He's coming again. <clears throat> because the Lord says, Ye do show the Lord's death till He come. So this is very important what we're doing here today. This is not just something to get through. This is something to savor. This is something to experience and savor and appreciate. Because our Lord Jesus gave it all on the cross of Calvary. The least we can do is to honor Him as He requested for us to honor Him. The question is, are we ready? I appreciate this, uh, this book, Trail of Fire. In it, he talks about, so as we come, let's ask God, the Lord Jesus, to cleanse us. I've been preparing myself all week. I mean it. When I was in that garage working on those brakes, I said, Lord, I'm preparing for your, your supper, your Lord's table. I want to prepare for it. I need you to help me with this. So as I look back to that time that he loosened that bolt up, I'm grateful. He asked Finney, Finney, one of the great revivalists, he said, in gratitude, do you express gratitude quickly in any and all situations? Are you thankful? Brother Bob was sick this week. Prayed the Lord would strengthen him, raise him up. And he did. Praise the Lord for that. Lack of love for God. Have you told him you love him today? Is Jesus the first thing you think about in the morning? The last thing you think about as you go to bed? Neglect of the Bible. Is your Bible dusty? Have you hidden his word in your heart? How quickly does his word come to your mind? Unbelief. Do you have faith? you trust him? Neglect of prayer. Neglect of the means of grace. Is church attendance important to you? Are you forsaking the assembly of the saints? Are you giving obediently to the Lord? Have you found a place to serve in the house of God? Love for others. Neglect of duty. Self-control. On we can go. I'm asking you to take time right now personally and ask the Lord. Take a personal inventory in your life. Say, Lord, is there anything in my life that's displeasing to you. Listen, uh, I, I, the, the, the greatest thing that I can do for you as a preacher is to challenge you and let you know that any moment he's breaking through that cloud. And if you're ready, if we help you get ready for that moment, or should he call you home? I'm going to look you up in heaven. Maybe you'll look me up and say, Thank you, preacher! For challenging me, he that hath this hope in him purifieth himself. Amen? Well, that Jesus is coming any moment. No doubt. The way this world's going, I really believe he's soon coming. Any moment. Are you ready? That's the question. Let's remember him. One of the ways we acknowledge that he's coming is the Lord's Supper. Let's bow for prayer, shall we? <clears throat> I wish I could tell you about Hudson Taylor as we bow our heads, and I'll just share with you. There was a heroin addict that was harassing him and his workers in that great work in China that he did. One day, Hudson Taylor and his little flock had the Lord's Supper. And that wicked heroin, cursing heroin addict that wanted to kill Hudson Taylor, he stood in the back. He walked in because he wanted to cause harm. And he walked in and he saw them having the Lord's Supper. And as he saw their reverence, 
and their joy and their obedience. That man walked down the aisle and said, I, I want your Jesus. He got saved because he witnessed the Lord's Supper. Attended by people with reverent, grateful hearts. Are you thankful today? Thankful for salvation? If you're not sure about your salvation, would you please make sure about it? We had a dear man saved last Sunday. Pray for Kelson. We miss him today. Others. Pray for little Susanna in the hospital right now, fighting for her life. Pray for her, will you? But then take a moment and say, Lord, search me, O God. Know my heart today. And see if there be any wicked way in me. Will you do that? I guarantee you. You will have joy and you will have peace that you never knew you could have if you would allow the Lord to thoroughly search you. Do some open heart searchery. Amen? Let him search you. And then let him take the heavenly scalpel of his precious word and cut out that which is hindering you from having the abundant life that he promised in John 10.10. 10. I am come that you might have life that you might have it more abundantly. So, maybe you'd say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm not sure that if I die today, I go to heaven. But I'd like to be sure. Anybody like that today? All right. Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. I know the Lord Jesus is my Savior, but I'm not living for him. Pray for me. There's something there's some something or some things in my life I need to get right with God even now. Maybe there's a root of bitterness there. Maybe there's unforgiveness. Maybe there's anger. Maybe there's temporal values. Maybe there's immorality. Maybe there's some kind of compromise in your life that listen, I'm just trying to get you ready for what's coming. Because if you if, if you're not ready, it's going to be a sad moment for you. Father in heaven, prepare our hearts now, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.